Today I'm going to show you about uh, log targets that exist in the data power. So we will see uh, how a log target is configured. But before we see that, uh, we need to know uh, a couple of things about log targets. So first thing is the usability. What is the use of a log target? As you have seen in my earlier video, data power has a, uh, has a detailed level of logging. So if you click on view logs, you will see that uh, there is logging that is going on over here. But the problem associated with it is that uh, it is basically intermixed. Intermixed with the logs that you are searching and uh, there are a couple of more data that you can find uh, which is not of your particular use. So uh, uh, what will happen if you want to troubleshoot a specific uh, piece of object or a specific category of object and you want to know that uh, what is happening, what is going on and you want to collect logs uh, related to that object only. So uh, for example, you have created a web service proxy and uh, you want to collect logs related to that web service proxy only. To facilitate such kind of debugging, Data Power has provided log targets. So you can configure log targets and uh, you can say that uh, this log target uh, will collect logs for that particular object only. Uh, th there, there is a, a range of granularity that you can specify with logging targets. So you can specify that uh, this logging target will collect logs for only uh, this kind of object or uh, this category of object which is a higher level of granularity. So you can do that and uh, as a result the logs which you will see or which will be collected as part of that uh, uh, logging target will hold your uh, required logs only and it will not hold uh, another kind of uh, spurious logs uh, which is not of your interests. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, see how a logging target is created in data power and we will test them as well. So to do that you should be in appropriate domain uh, and uh, <coughs> click here uh, right here log target right so we are on uh, this screen and I will click add once I click add I have several options to create it I will provide it a name for example test log target okay optionally comment you can provide now you need to provide where this log target will do the lo logging so I will say file once I say file relevant options come down but before we go down let's see what other options are log format so log format we choose as a text so uh, you have seen the default logging that is happening on the uh, data power logs. I have just shown you that. That format is a text format. So we want our logging to happen on the same format. That's why we chose text. But any format will suffice. So you can CBE, CSV, raw, text, XML, whatever is your choice, you can do that. Typically when we choose XML, the intent is that uh, we export the log and then we have a log viewing program uh, which can uh, take this XML uh, document and format it in an appropriate way so that, that this is suitable for logging. And uh, timestamp format is syslog, let it be as it is, feedback detection. This is something which stops looping. So what happens is that sometimes uh, when uh, logs are generated, a kind of loop may uh, get uh, generated uh, in logging mechanism. So this log target uh, will detect such kind of looping and uh, will not uh, collect logs over and over from that loop. Uh, similar is identical event detection. So if there, uh, if identical events happen, uh, this log will not collect them more than once. File So I will say uh, log temp and uh, test log file dot txt so we want uh, this kind of so I have provided a basically a file name and a directory name where uh, that
particular log file will reside. Log size is uh, 500 kilobytes, which seems sufficient to me as of now. Archival mode is rotate. So data power, uh, when, uh, see, the, these two parameters uh, go hand in hand, number of rotations and archival mode. So what it, it says is that uh, after uh, once uh, we have a log file which has size 500 kilobytes, it will be it will be dumped into log temp directory for archival purpose. Now there are three such files that can go to the log temp directory. Once uh, three files get archived there and uh, the log is still keep on generating, then uh, the first file which was archived will be overwritten with the new log. So that's why uh, this is number of rotations. This is, this is typically uh, the same design which we found in uh, of Oracle database. If it runs into uh, if if it if it runs if it if it does the default log. So um, what happens in Oracle database is that uh, uh, you will have typically. Uh, uh, redo log files or something like that and they are uh, they are uh, fixed in number 3, 4, 5 whatever you specify and if your database is not running in archival log mode then the default behavior is that three of the files get created and after if the logs keep on generating then those files will be utilized for uh, further logging purpose so that's the same design security leave it uh, for the mom for the moment and encryption mode leave it as well backup log you need not configure it it's an optional parameter now here is event filters event filters allows you to choose uh, what events you want to subscribe and what events you do not want to subscribe uh, this is typically an advanced feature and uh, there is a specific use for that for, but for current purpose uh, we can just omit it. Yeah, so we have now object filters. Object filters basically specifies which object you are interested in. So for example, if you have created a, uh, a web service proxy and you want to collect logs associated with that proxy only so you will click add over here then in the object type you will choose a, choose a web services proxy WSP. That will be somewhere it is. give me a second I'm finding out yeah so this is it. This is web service gateway. This is basically web service proxy. So uh, you need to choose that uh, web service, uh, the object type. Then you can type in object name over here. Object name is a mandatory parameter if you want to fill it. Uh, but since uh, uh, there is no object as of now, uh, I mean there is no web service proxy over here. So I will leave it as a default. I mean uh, I will cancel it and I will not uh, select it there is also an option that uh, we need to provide add reference objects so what it will do is that uh, a web service proxy is something uh, which references a lot of objects inside it At, it's a top level object so it is composed of a lot of objects inside it and uh, if we say that add reference object is on then uh, this logging target will try to log or uh, logs associated with all those inherent objects as well. So that's how this uh, typical option works. So I'll cancel it as of now. Hmm. And uh, now we have IP address filter. So you can specify that you want uh, you want your log target to collect logs associated with only a particular IP address. So this uh, this is how this is working event triggers is something which allows you to do when a particular event happens so for example uh, let's say if a particular kind of logging happens then uh, do you want to uh, perform some action in the data power if you want then this is the place to go you click add and there is message id that you can put here this message id is something which is shown over here yeah i think this one this one is the message id this event code is something which we need to put there so event triggers um, 
this is for that purpose regular expression this is uh, for matching something uh, correspond uh, corris in the in your log message and this is cli command so you can uh, specify the command uh, that data power should execute when particular kind of message appears over here so this is how it is uh, configured and then it is event subscription so event subscription specifies you that uh, what particular event that you want to uh, uh, catch so since we do not have any kind of object configured over here uh, in in this particular domain so we will not be able to uh, put the object filter but we will definitely put the event filter to see how this log target behaves let's say that uh, i want to collect uh, logs for triple a policy only and this is minimum event priority so event priorities are over here and uh, practical way in which this is used is that for example if you uh, if you select that uh, ev minimum event priority of let's say debug then what will happen is that events whose priority is debug and above all will be collected by this logging target similarly if you choose error uh, e uh, log logs uh, whose uh, minimum event priority is error or above will be uh, collected by your log target but log um, logs which have a minimum event priority of warning or notice or information or debug will not be collected if you want to collect all the logs choose the debug so i click on apply so i have a freshly created logging target available you can see it is up and uh, i would like to test it so how would i test remember uh, we want event category as aaa and minimum event priority is debug so there is a tool provided in data power through which you can test the logging target all you need to do is to go to control panel troubleshooting this is the option which we typically use for testing the logging target so we say that manually generate a log with a log target aaa you can see log level debug log messages this is my test message during logging target configuration that's it event code i do not know so i will not select it generate log event confirm and close now let's see if that logging target is working fine or first of all we will see that our log got generated correctly or not do that go to view logs and see okay so here that kind that logging is not available fine let's go to the file system let's see if uh, our file got created or not yeah our file got created which is test log file dot txt and you can see that uh, whatever we have uh, done i mean the logs that we have generated manually is collected by it we can go ahead and we can again test one more thing so go ahead troubleshooting section choose triple a and let's see if uh, we, remember uh, we have configured uh, that logging level as debug in that log target so uh, the expected result is that even if a uh, log with log level error that needs to be collected there as well so uh, i have selected error and log message is uh, this is a test message with log level error generate event log confirm close go back to file management log temp let's see yeah so your second log is also so that is how a typical logging target is configured if you don't want the logging target to uh, log then uh, you can go ahead and you can disable them log target where you can always disable them so that uh, they do not perform they do not collect logging on the data power appliance 
So this is how a typical logging target is configured. You can play around various options. Uh, they give you plenty of flexibility in order to collect logs. And this is a very helpful thing in uh, troubleshooting as well. And remember that uh, logs can not only be uh, collected on the data power appliance, they can be, mm, they can be sent over uh, TCP or uh, UDP channels if you have that configured outside. So uh, they can also be uh, collected over there as well. And that's how they are done in typical production environment. So uh, that's all for configuring the uh, logging target. Thanks for uh, viewing my video. This is Ajitabh.